we are doing another one of our little videos about West Overton. This is number two. And we're going to look at some of the things that were going on at West Overton in the early years. Uh, for a long time, West Overton was known for whiskey. They, they made whiskey there. Old Overholt is a whiskey that was associated with the place, but it was actually made a little bit south of West Overton, down in Broad Broadford. The whiskey was made at uh, West Overton. was called Old Farm Whiskey. Now, this guy was actually Old Overholt himself. 1810, it shows as the date when uh, they started brewing whiskey there, but actually they started brewing it previously to that. But they were just making it for the family and for the neighbors. Uh, and it happened that uh, they became convinced that they should start making a commercial. This is Scottdale. This is just showing context. This is West Overton up here, 119. You see, they had coke ovens here, too. They had a coal mine. The coal mine was very important for keeping the fires going to uh, make steam engines go, to run the mill, and to uh, make the uh, heat for the distilling process. This was Abraham Overholt. You might think of him as Old Abe, if you want, or Old, old Overholt. He was 16 years old when he arrived at West Overton in... 1800, and around 1810, he decided that it would be a good idea to start making whiskey commercially, because previously to that, he had made, he was a weaver. He was weaving coverlets and selling them to, uh, you know, for income, and he was not alone there. He, he and his father and his family, I mean, he, he was one of 12 children that arrived there in 1800 with their father, Henry. And as things got better, he built a house for himself, a Georgian Revival building, which was a nice old building. It now serves as the office of the uh, museum, West Overton Museum there. That is a much better shot of it. And we might mention that West Overton is often spoken of as the home of uh, Henry Clay Frick, which it was. He was built, or he was born in this little spring house on the property. But truth to tell, he really didn't have a lot to do at the place. As a teenager, he clerked in his Uncle Christian's store. But his really significant contribution was his... Uh, his money, I mean, his money was used to keep the place from, you know, being blasted into oblivion. Uh, it had, you know, at one point it was very, in a da very dangerous condition. I mean, it was uh, almost, you know, fell into ruin. But Frick's money uh, saved the place. This is one of the children of... Abraham Overholt, Henry Stauffer Overholt. Henry and his father, Abraham, worked together to really develop West Overton. They developed it agriculturally and actually as an industrial operation. It's a really good example of the transition from the early farming economy into the er newer machine age technology. I, I somehow think of uh, Henry and his father as oxen working together, yoked together. Uh, I don't know why I have that funny image. But they died together in the same year, uh, in the same year, you know, different times. About 1870, they passed away. That was a house that was built there on the, on the, uh, on the plantation or the little village for Henry, Henry's house. I, I took these shots when they were in very bad shape. They've been since then improved. This is the house after it's been fixed up, fortunately. That is the place where the uh, mill and the distillery 
was located. That's a better shot of that. Uh, this northern end was where the mill was located. The southern end was where the distillery was. They actually had a boiler house close to here that made steam to drive a, a steam engine in here that ran the, uh, ran the mill that ground flour and ground the uh, chop that became the mash for the whiskey. And the steam also heated the vats, the, the, you know, the stills that distilled the, uh, the brew to uh, you know, make it into whiskey. This is now the museum. And it commemorates West Overton. Old Farm, Old Farm Pure Rye. This is a better shot to show the uh, juxtaposition of these buildings. This is Abraham Overholt's mansion that he built in the 1830s. This is the uh, the later. There were earlier earlier mill distillery buildings here, but this is the one that was built in 1859. This shows us the historic district. There's a district, historic district, registered with the United States Park Service. This right here is the, uh, the mill and distillery. Over here is the uh, the mansion. This is the museum complex here. And these are the contributing buildings. There was north of here a mine that mined coal. Coal was used to keep the, uh, the boiler house going, the steam engines going. There was also a coke operation. They made coke. There was once a railroad coming in here to bring things in and out. This whole thing is a good example of vertical integration. They were doing everything at the same place. They were digging coal to keep the fires going for the uh, boiler house. They were making, uh, they were growing wheat and rye to uh, be ground up and distilled. Uh, they had, uh, actually at one point there was a operation here that was a place that made um, casket fixtures a lot of things happened here. The coal mine, the uh, coke ovens. I mean, they had a lot of housing here for workers, too. A lot of this has been erased. What happened was during the 20s, there was a movement to kind of clean up the place and make it pretty. And so a lot of the more interesting things have been kind of wiped out. But uh, it is still a very significant uh, monument to the development in western Pennsylvania of early agriculture and early uh, machine age technology actually. And I think we've done enough for this one and we will see you again for another little production of West Overton and so long. Bye bye.